but it's thin and thick and there's two different differences for two different reasons. You're trying to control and block heat and the, and the thin one you're just throwing it off so it never loads and that's the key. In the field of ceramics, ceramic compounds, uh, there's this thought that <clears throat> maybe just hollow spheres is all you would need for insulation. And over the years, the 34 years that I've studied ceramic compounds, the point came to be real quick that uh, ceramic compounds, you get them in certain sizes and then a particular size, micron size, will uh, block a wave, uh, another one will not. Then also a hollow sphere <clears throat> can help you, but it's not going to do everything by itself because a uh, hollow sphere can also load heat over time and it'll start to drift through the coating film. So you have to have, you have to give it some help. And the help is that uh, uh, about three or four more compounds that we've got in one of the coatings uh, helps to block the heat, uh, emit, emit it back off, called emissivity, throw it back off, and things like this, and helps that process. A bead, they claim that it would try to do that, but it's there for non-conduction more than anything else. And you, have, you can't just use one bead because it, by itself, it's limited. And that's just common sense, but I've also uh, discovered that over about 4,000 compounds that I've studied. And so the other point here <clears throat> is that in the, in the field of insulation, let's call it, there's thin film and thick film. And one coating is not going to do it all unless you have a very thick coating that's like you know, quarter inch thick or something and you're slapping it up there and you're hoping the thickness is what does the trick for you. But thickness, the more thick you are, the more shrinkage you might get over time and have some problems with adhesion here and there, maybe over seams and things like this and create a problem for you. But in the design of something, what you're looking for is the ceramics doing the job the, the resin is just there to lay it out and pull them together, hold them together, and lock it down so that the ceramics can do the job, not the thickness. So in the case of, uh, and a lot of people don't understand that, there's, that you need two types of insulation for roofing and then for hot surfaces. And I'll explain that. So there's two types of insulation coatings. There's a thin coat, and in our case, it's Supertherm and SunShield. But it's about 10 mils, 250 microns. It's in ambient climates. And when I say ambient climates, it can be uh, any climate from about uh, 70 degrees Fahrenheit up to, say, 130 degrees over in the Middle East, Oman, and that sort of thing. So what we do here is that that's... The thin coat, again, is based on ceramics that's designed to catch and block radiation heat waves. And this is UV, short wave or visual, long wave IR. And this is the percent of heat on each of those waves that's been studied. And when I say that, a heat wave is coming like this, just like a sound wave in the atmosphere you've got to be able to catch the, the size of that wave and actually block it. If you say, I just threw some ceramics or I threw some beads out there, it'll do it. No, it won't. It won't block, especially IR. It won't block that. And in Japan, we had that tested where we blocked 99% of that. But that, uh, the blocking of the heat wave is, is scientific, and you've got to match that heat wave. So that's the, that's the thin coat. That's for roofing, walls, things, facing the radiational heat from the sun and that sort of thing. Then you have the thick coating, which is our HSC, HPC, and HPCHT. And that's about 250 mils or 6 millimeter up to about 3,000 or 3 inches, uh, 75 millimeter. Those are using different kinds of ceramic compounds. 
the ones that catch heat and throw it off, that doesn't work on a hot pipe that you can catch something that's coming off at like 300 degrees and then the coating is trying to throw that heat back into that 300 degrees and maybe it's at, uh, you know, it, it doesn't work that way. It's physics doesn't work. So you have to have different compounds and what the, how they're made is that they got, it's, it's extreme low density, low vibration of the particles. And what do you mean by that? That means that electrical and heat are about the same in riding the same car. And you got to slow down or stop, slow down the vibration of those molecules so that it doesn't build up the heat and they want to go faster the, more, the faster they vibrate. So we slow that down. And that's part of the process. But it slows the blocking of heat from a hot surface, say a pipe surface, to the atmosphere. And right now with standard insulations, they come through air because the, the uh, material that they use for that doesn't really block. Uh, but the air inside, but the air heats up. Your vibration starts and then, it, then it's lost. It gets to a heat flux full of heat and then it's lost. In this case, we slow that vibration down and that way we prevent the loss from the surface through the coating film to the atmosphere and employee protection that's touted over and over and over again, if you're insulating, that's covered. And that's how we see it and that's how we, we went about our design and development of these products. If it's insulating, it's not hot. Well, that's employee. And it's not hot for only five seconds. You can lay on it and you'll be fine. But uh, this five-second rule is kind of crazy to me because if I, I'm too slow anymore, if I fall on something, I'm going to be there longer than five seconds. So 5.1 seconds, I may get burnt. I'm not interested in that. I want to I insulate it, and you can lay on it. So let's just kind of go down that road. But it's thin and thick, and there's two different differences for two different reasons. You're trying to control and block heat, and the, and the thin one, you're just throwing it off so it never loads, and that's the key. This comes up quite often, and uh, recently at the AMPP show, uh, this came up about how do you explain how this actually works right here? I mean, you've got a, you've got a film that's maybe a quarter inch that's outperforming something that's six to eight inches in standard insulation materials and things like this. It says, well, in the standard insulation materials, you're trying, the, it's, it ha they have R values. Okay, what's an R value? Well, it's how fast something comes off, the heat comes into this material, loads into it, and then, uh, and what the, to hit what's called heat flux, load it, and then it comes through. Well, we don't, we don't believe in that kind of insulation. Insulation is hold the heat on the surface. Here's a hot pipe, hold it on that surface. If you can do that, then you'll hold the heat inside and you'll actually increase the heat on the inside of this because the pressure increases. So how do you do that? Well, the ceramic compounds that we use, uh, and again, now we've gone through about 4,000 compounds over 34 years to find the ones that actually work made into a coating. Uh, when I worked with NASA uh, on, on this research for six years, then uh, uh, they had a book and we had 17. And these are the best ones in the book, but they were dry state. How about when you put them in a coating? Well, they don't work. So which ones do? Well, that's trial and error. So there you go. And so what I've learned over the many years is the electrical and heat, they kind of ride in the same car. How do you control heat or, or electrical vibration and things like this that causes it to move? You get the molecules that in the, in the ceramic compounds themselves that just don't have the density to vibrate. You can, it's hard to make them vibrate and all this, so how does the heat get some speed so it can move? It's got to have vibration. It works off of vibration. So if you can limit that vibration, you're going to limit the travel of the, of the heat from the source, the surface, 
through the coating film to the outside. And that's how it works. Okay, on the thick coatings for the blocking, holding and blocking heat on a surface, the coatings we made right here are to go on and be applied while it's operating. Now, I know some of the competition by now is saying, well, we can go on and spray something on a, on a hot pipe. Well, a hot pipe is up to 275 or 300 degrees. That's uh, eh, somewhat, you know, that, uh, that is somewhat uh, hot, but not what we consider hot. The ceramics doesn't consider it hot. So we can go from uh, about quarter inch right here, 250 and start up to about uh, 400 degrees, something like this with a standard uh, HPC coating, water-based spray on while it's operating. We like doing that because it dries it out faster and you can get, you can build up your thickness, whatever it is you need. But then after 400 degrees, this is where everybody else falls out of the game. And you're, you're told over and over again, until I went into the field with it, that, uh, you know, 90% of everything is 400 or 350 and below. Until I got out there and I could prove that we could do up to 1,250. Then all of a sudden, there's a huge market for that because nobody, it's either not wrapped or insulated at all because nothing does a job, uh, and that's usually the case. And so the just extreme loss of heat and energy. So we've got HPC HT. That is made, of course it's got some sil silicone in it, of course. But silicone by itself is not going to do the job. Because if you can take silicone and you can throw it at a hot pipe, 1200 degree pipe, it'll just bounce off. You got no adhesion. But you need that kind of material in the formulation to kind of withstand that kind of heat temperature <coughs> in the long run. Then your ceramic compounds are the same as in here they're just, because they will do the job up to 2,000 degrees. But you got to have a vehicle for them to ride in. So this is where the, the resin system comes to play that can take us up to 1,250F, that's 650C. And so we can go up there. We can spray it when it's 650C. And you just spray it, and you, we spray thin coats first, and it steams off, and then we just build it up. But you can do it all at once, in, in once. You can kind of go down, come back, and just keep going. And that whole pipe can be coated in a matter of uh, an hour or so. So it's, it's pretty simple, pretty easy, actually because we wanted it to make it that way. You don't want anything to be hard to do when you get in the field, especially in tight, you know, you got pipes here and you got a pipe there and you got different things running around. You want to be able to spray this fairly easy. Don't make it hard. Well, that's the way these are designed. And so we can get in there and spray these things out. But we can go 650C, easy, and we can, uh, we can spray it in and it's, a, it's not an expensive machine, it's easy, and we can do this, uh, do this fairly easily and quick. A lot of question comes like, <clears throat> okay, so these, these work. Well, how long do they last? And uh, my, of course, my, my favorite answer is, well, uh, you put the standard insulation materials in the wall, did you ever go back and check, see if it's still working two days later? <laughs> when it hit all this humidity and, and temperature above 75 degrees, which is what it was only tested at. But did you ever check that? No, but I understand the question. So with the Japanese, uh, when back in 1994, I believe it was, or uh, there in, the, in that neighborhood, we coated some roofing out in Western Kansas and why western Kansas? Because they have hail, windstorms, sandstorms, snow, ice, out on those plains before you get to Denver. And it's just terrible at times. And so you want a rough environment, you get out there and it can be a hundred and something degrees during the summertime. And then it's minus 
30 and the wind chills during the winter time with all that snow and ice and stuff like this and storms. So we've got a, we've got a roof out there that, that the Japanese monitored with us for the first 15 years. And they even cut off a piece of the roof, which I had to talk to the owner about, <laughs> still trying to do it at night, and, uh, and uh, take that and send it back to a lab, which they retested just to see. Now, it was fairly dirty, but the heat was able to bounce off of it, and it was still about 87% effective after 15 years. Now, we checked it again in 30 years, still performing. Now it's been 34 years. So we've got an actual application on an actual roof in a very tough environment for 34 years, still there, still operating. So how long can that last? Well, so far, 34 years. How long do you need? And uh, so uh, your lifetime, what are you talking about? <laughs> so the thick coating right here, this is the one that over years and years and years that we, I had to try to get the ceramics right. Okay, then I got the ceramics right that would do the, block the molecule, slow down the molecule vibration, block the heat transfer off of the surface through it and, and, and lock that down. But the application and on the, whatever you might be on, usually steel, but we had some concretes and things like this. What works uh, as far as a resin system? Now that was a lot of headache and a lot of failure. And oh, uh, uh, I mean, let's just look at it. I went through 4,000 ceramic compounds and we use about 12. That's a lot of failure. I'm used to that, so I can handle that. Well, we had a lot of failure in the beginning days with this one right here trying to figure out what's going to hold those ceramics on there and secure them and lock them and really make sure they're there and going to stay there. And so that came to a combination of, of resins. This resin, that resin, and they claim to be high temperature and they're generally not. Uh, and, but you, you get mixtures going and you finally come to that. Well, about somewhere around 10, 12 years ago, it locked in, we finally got it. And now we can, I can say that on the oil field rigs, and we've got a bunch of this on oil field rigs out in the Gulf of Mexico, that they've been out there nearly right around 10 years or so, vi some vibration, uh, the climate is, you know, humid, you get rain, you get wind, uh, you get uh, drop tools, you get all this kind of stuff you'd normally have on a rig. And it's still there, it's still operating at the same function in the same form that it was when we first applied it. Because these ceramics are inert. They don't really deteriorate. <laughs> They're true ceramics. So they, they just sit there and do their job as long as you can hold them on there. And that's what it took the effort to find is the resin systems combinations that would hold them on there, and we found that. So it's been out there about 10 years, it's operating, and there's no, uh, there's no reduction in performance, and they love it, and so we're replacing a lot of standard insulations because we can also seal it, seal a pipe while we insulate it. And employee protection is just part of it because we insulated the pipe. It's got employee protection. So we don't, we don't say employee protection for five seconds insulate the blooming thing, that's what people want. That saves money, not, not employee protection. So, there, there you go.